As was mentioned, I've been asked to give a discourse on the signs of the establishment of the kingdom and its manifestations. I was asked to uh, give this uh, discourse about three months ago, and in the three months of prepare, preparing, you keep adding and adding and adding uh, points that you think are relevant. Got to a point where it was 91 pages long, and I still didn't cover everything. So I'm going to try and uh, hit the high points, and uh, we will not do it justice as far as covering all the points. But uh, in looking at the uh, uh, definition of kingdom, it uh, is number uh, four, four, six, seven, and uh, it states it's the dominion. That is the estate, the rule, the kingdom, the kings, the reign, the royal, the controlling. Revelations eleven fifteen, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, "The kings of kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever." In the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. <clears throat> we find that the period of the establishment of the kingdom of God originally was the first dominion placed in the hands of the human race as represented in the first man, Adam, who was perfect and therefore fully qualified to be the Lord, ruler, uh, king of earth. This dominion given to mankind in the person of Adam was the first establishment of the kingdom of God on earth. We thus go through the different times of how they for, Adam forfeited the rights and it all changed. Having provided the price for it, as we read in reprints 5890, the title is now given in him. He is now the rightful heir, that is Jesus, and in due time will take possession of his purchase in Ephesians 1.14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchase, possession unto the praise of his glory. <clears throat> since, 18, since 1874, we are in a grand transition period of time. This period of time started with our Lord's return. In Ezekiel 21, 27, we read, I will overthrow it, overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come, whose right it is, and I will give it him. We learn that God had a very specific time in his divine plan of the ages when he will once again turn his face of favor toward mankind and the earth. It will start with the process of the dawning of the day, dispelling the nighttime of darkness. We also learn that he has a very specific event that will start this change. He sends his only begotten son, Jesus, back to earth, quite literally, to earth's atmosphere, 1 Thessalonians 4.17, to begin and oversee the numerous aspects of the divine plan that are all necessary to properly complete the promised restitution. Jesus has paid the price for the human race, and that includes even the earth itself. Psalms 2 verse 8, Ask of me and I shall give the heathen for thine inheritance and uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Restitution has been going on since 1874, especially since entering the seventh day. He had a right to bring these restitution blessings to the earth, even before it applies the merit to the world of mankind. We have entered a thousand year transitional period shown by the Jubilees pointing us to the year of our Lord's return, namely October 1874. Be it noted that this year, namely October 2024, will be 150 years since that momentous return of our Lord Jesus. Let's look at the Jubilees and how they corroborate the uh, Jubilee type, the anti-type, and for central features of God's plan. We find 
that explained in Leviticus 25, 8 to 11. It establishes the length of the seventh day of creation. It shows us where we are in the stream of time, namely how the Sabbaths fit for, fit for restitution. Our first insight, one that is most intimate importance to us who have been waiting for our bridegroom's promised return is when would that this great antitypical jubilee begin and to our wonder and joy we have learned that through the detailed and precise measure, methods and calculating the jubilee cycles God had ordained through Moses, we can determine the date as October 1874. Let's look at a few of the facts uh, re, re, uh, relating to this. Each creative day is 7,000 years from Adam's creation till BC AD is 4,128 years and 4,126 years from when Adam sinned. From 81 till the end of the millennial age is 2,874, 2,874 years. One half of the 7,000 years or seven Creative day is 3,500 years, which brings us to 625 BC. Israel finished their 19th Jubilee. The Jubilee started 1575 BC, which began the typical Jubilee counting. The first thing that the Israelites did when they entered the land was they began dividing up of the land. It took six years. Each Jubilee cycle was 50 years. How many cycle Jubilee cycles are spoken about scripturally? 70. How many cycles were celebrated by the Israelites? 19. That brings us to a midpoint of the 7,000 years or 625 BC. What two ways are the Jubilee cycles counted? There's the law and the prophetic. The, the, under the law, 19 were kept. 19 times 50 equals 950 years, started at 1575 BC to 625 BC. 50 times 50 equals 2520 years, started at 625 BC to 1874. One left over shows anti-type thousand year jubilee of the earth. The times of restitution of all things. Jubilee counting as in, as in prophecy, 19 times 50, 950 years. 51 times 49 equals 2499 years. Start at 625 BC to 1874 AD. One Jubilee year, year end of the 49th is the 50th or the thousand year Jubilee of the earth. The times of restitution of all things. What comes after the seven times 7,000? 49,000 years, it is the grand jubilee of the 50th or the 50th. After 2874 ages to come, when everyone will be equal as was all Israelites after the grand jubilee. It is as brother Russell wrote in volume three, verses, uh, page 88, words fail us to express this blessedness of the detail shown in the jubilee type, the grand jubilee. We are in the grand transition period, showing the binding of Satan, Matthew 20, 12, 29. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except the fir first he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. But now, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in which time the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. The day of the Lord is the day when Jesus takes to himself his kingly power. The first work of the new king is the binding of Satan, the present prince of this world. For how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man? Then he will spoil his, his house, Matthew 12, 29. And for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8. Satan's reign has been one of terror under cover of darkness, ignorance of this world. But the present dominion of evil is to end, and the prince of darkness, Satan, is being bound. The kingdom of Christ is to bring joy and peace, 
and the nation shall walk in the light of it. Revelation 21, 24. <clears throat> Another part of this grand transition period, we are told to come out of her, my people. Reprint, I didn't get that. Could you try re again? reprint 54, 78, page 179. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and ye receive none of her plagues. Revelations 18, 4. The context of the above scripture shows that our text reference to ba is reference to Babylon. The term Babylon seems to signify a concentration of the various errors in the apostate church systems, personified in Revelation and mother and daughters. Babylon the Great and the mother of harlots is the name given by the Lord to the original system, thus intimating that the whole brood is illegitimate and in every sense of the word, she neglected the heavenly bridegroom and mingled in her cup a stupefying potion that has intoxicated the world. Even the Lord's saints were bewildered. Revelation 17, 1 to 6. Our text with this context is a prophecy that in the end of the present age, a time would come when God Sorry, would I'm fully so sure reject Babylon in the picture given us in Revelations by this time. The Lord's rejection of the apostate church is declared in the words, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. She has been spewed out of his mouth, and the Almighty now calls upon his true people to come out of her. Soon as pictured in the scripture, the sea of anarchy will swallow up the false systems. Babylon is to be cast as a great millstone into the sea. Psalms 46.2 Jeremiah 51, 62. Furthermore, the times and seasons of God's plan are now made manifest. We are shown that we are now living in the time foretold when these systems of error are to be rejected by the Lord. Should we not leave these systems when we see all this? This is the God's voice to come out of her, my people, receive none of her plagues. The plagues coming upon Babylon are sore troubles which will result in the complete overthrow of the present order of things, political, social, financial, religious. This order of things in its various phases is one cause under different uniforms. These interests are all united in one great policy. The princes and kings of the earth and their supporters are Babylon's great army and pitted against it in another vast army composed of the masses of the people. The conflict between these two great armies will ere long participate the present order of things of the world into anarchy. Yes, the true wheat were commissioned in 1874 to come out of the field. Another feature during this grand transition period was the giving forth of the meat in due season. The last great reformer to, to whom was given the honor of being the instrument for the complete restoration of the faith once delivered unto the saints was Charles Taz Russell. He made no claim of a special revelation from God. He only claimed that because it was God's due time for the divine plan of the ages, to be understood because he was fully consecrated to God and ready, able, and willing to serve God. His mind was stimulated and illuminated. He was permitted to understand the plan and transmitted his knowledge to others. He was the founder of the new religion. He was not the founder of a new religion and never made such claim. He was only an instrument, simply revived the great truths taught by Jesus and the apostles, which were spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets. Matthew 24, 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Yet another feature during this grand transition is the year 1878. In this year, we are reminded of the rising of the sleeping saints. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. 
and the dead in Christ shall rise first. In volume three, study six, we read, but now we are in the end of the gospel age and the millennial kingdom is being established or set up. The Lord, our Lord, the appointed King is now present since October 1874 AD. According to the testimony of the prophets to those who have ears to hear and the formal inauguration of this kingly office dates from April 1878 AD. And the first work of the kingdom as shown by our Lord in his parables and prophecy, the gathering of his elect is now in progress. The dead in Christ shall rise first, explained the Lord to the apostle and the resurrection of the church shall be in a moment. Consequently, the kingdom as represented in our Lord and the sleeping saints already fitted and prepared and found worthy to be members of his body, the bride, was set up in 1878. And all that remains to be done for its completion is the gathering together unto the Lord and those of the elect who are alive and remain, whose trial is not yet complete. Still one more feature happened during this grand, says, grand transitional period in the year 1878. In volume two, study two, titled The Parallel Dispensation, The Doubles. On page 218 of volume two, the period of Israel's favor was from the commencement of their national existence at the death of Jacob down to the end of their favor at the den death of Jesus of Christ, AD 33. That period of time was 1845 years, and there their double, Mishnah, the repetition or duplication of the same length of time, 1845 years, uh, 1840 years without favor began. 1845 years since AD 1833 shows 1878 to be the end of the period of disfavor. All these, prof all these prophetic points in the past are clearly marked and we should expect some evidence of God's returning favor to fleshly Israel, Jacob, in or about AD 1878. This we do find in the fact that the Jew was permitted privileges in Palestine, denied him for centuries past. And it was in that year, 1878 AD, when their double was full and God's favor was due to return to that people, that the Berlin Congress of Nations was held in which Lord Beaconsfield, a Jew, then Prime Minister of England was the central figure and took the leading part. There, England assumed a general protectorate over the Asiatic provinces of Turkey, among which is Palestine, and the Turkish government amended its laws relating to aliens, and which greatly favored the condition of the Jews then presiding in Palestine as well, as partially opened up the door for others to locate there, with the privilege of holding real estate, Previously, previously, the Jew was but a dog to be cuffed, kicked, and abused by his Mohammedan ruler, and was denied the most ordinary privileges of existence in the land sacred to him with memories of the past and the promises touching the future. 1878 was the end of the Jewish double. We know of this event, Padatikva, Petitikva was termed, was the engagement ring of something further to happen. Hosea 2, 14 and 15. Therefore, behold, I will, lure, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vineyards <clears throat> from thence and the valley of anchor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there and in the days of her youth, as in the days of youth, and as in the day when she came out of the land of Egypt, Petatikva, meaning door, gate, or portal of hope. Another feature during this grand transition period is the post-1878 for the Jewish nation, Israel. Psalms, or Isaiah 40, verses 1 and 2. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortly to Jerusalem unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, and that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received 
the Lord's hand double for all her sins. God's attitude towards Israel from 1878 to the mentorial reign was the regathering Jews to their homeland. Let us look at some events that played in God's plan to establish Israel plus the regathering his people to that promised land. Also how the hunters and fishers played to this end. In Jeremiah 16:16 16, 16, we read, Behold, I will send for many fishers, unto, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after when I will send them hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Some notorious people were used of our Lord to make this happen. One such person was Dr. Theodore Herzl. He was born May 1860 in Austro-Hungary, in the province of Pest. He was a Jewish journalist, lawyer, writer, playwright, and political activist. He was the father of modern political Zionism. He formed the Zionist organization and promoted Jewish immigration to Palestine. He is specifically mentioned in the Israeli Declaration of Independence. In 1896, he published a pamphlet, Der Judenstadt, in which he elaborated his vision of a Jewish homeland, which attracted international attention. In 1897, Herzl convened the first Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland, and was elected president of the Zionist organization. He began a series of diplomatic initiatives to build support for a Jewish state, appealing unsuccessfully to German Emperor Wilhelm II and Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid II. At the sixth Zionist Congress in 1903, Herzl presented the Ugandan scheme, endorsed by Colonel Secretary Joseph Chamberlain on behalf of the British government. The proposal which sought to create a temporary refuge for the Jews in British East Africa following the Knesset program was met with strong opposition and ultimately rejected. Herzl died of a heart ailment in 1904 at the age of 44 and was buried in Vienna. In 1949, his remains were taken to Israel and reinterred on Mount Herzl. Reprints 3854, page 291, we read, just as the persecuted Jews of Russia were beginning to look for a place of refuge and were debating colonies in South America, United States and elsewhere, some going to Palestine, the door of the promised land was suddenly closed by the edict of the Sultan of Turkey in 1892. That very Prohibition led the Jews to look to the land of their fathers with greater intensity than ever. And the Zionist movement took form and took hold of the hearts of the Jews all over the world. The closing of the door led to the greater desire to enter it. And the Zionist fund was, and a via, Zionist fund was started ostensibly to purchase the land, but only the poor Jews had faith in the promise of the law and the prophets. The wealthy ones, generally unbelievers, refused their millions to the poor Zionists and loaned it instead to the pers per persecutors of their race. Reminds me presently of the New York Times, who were and are presently owned by Jews. Though the New York Times company is public, all voting shares are controlled by the Ouched Salzburg Family Trust. Salzburg parents were Cyrus Leopold Schalzberg, a cotton goods merchant, and Rachel Pexod Hayes. They came from old Jewish families. Arthur Hayes Salzberg, from 17, uh, September 12, 1891 to December 11, 1968, was the publisher of the New York Times from 1935 to 1961 who would overlook the Holocaust or anything to do with the Holocaust, write anything against Hitler regime he would not do. As years rolled on, as years rolled on and the Zionists became more and more enthused, 
Their plans were laid before the Sultan by Dr. Herzl, and it was said that all their funds were proffered for concessions in Palestine. Looking forward, looking toward the establishment there of a Jewish state, but to no avail. Palestine remained closed. Then the British government offered specifically, specially favored terms for a subordinate Jewish state south of Palestine in Africa, and this drew off the interest of some, but only the more whetted the desire of others for the promised land. Then came the death of Dr. Herzl in July 1904, their great leader, and no one seemed to fill his place. And Zionism became, began to faint by the way. Now suddenly without the influence of a great leader, without the cooperation of the millionaire Jews, without the expenditures of one dollar, the Sultan had lifted the embargo on Jewish immigration to Palestine as suddenly as he placed it, and without ado or explanation. To the ones who were watching, this all reads, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. God is behind the movement, and the Jews will yet realize this, and the meek among them will rejoice therein and learn to lean less upon our, the arm of flesh and more upon the arm of the Lord. Meantime, the Jews were charged by the Russian autocracy with being largely irresponsible for much of the trouble of that revolution shaken land. No doubt they were on, their, on this account more and more made the scapegoat of the situation. The government conniving at their persecution by the fallen, by the revolutionaries. If this persecution had gone on even with Jew, Jewish bankers, bankers loaned, had loaned money to Russia, may it not be expected to intensify when these shall refuse further loans, as was generally anticipated. The intelligent opposition of the Jews to that present reign of legalized anarchy may have led to the forcible expulsion of the Jews as a popular remedy. England alarmed at the situation in Egypt and by the efforts of the Sultan to encourage a holy war by the Mohammedanians had viewed with alarm the building of a railway from the Sinaitic Sinai Peninsula into Palestine, lest it should give the Sultan a military advantage and endanger the interest and political value of the Suez Canal. It is easy to believe that England therefore would be pleased to see the Jews, a friendly race, enter Palestine in considerable numbers. Some of the English people had manifested a Jew hatred and said that England had all the Jews she wanted. Germany was trembling with fear that what was now being enacted in Russia and the rest of the world. The socialists of Germany were expressing their sympathy with their brethren of Russia as loudly as prudence would permit. The German emperor feared that the success of the Russian revolutionists in forming a republic or even a formation of the very liberal monarchy would endanger their own autocratic powers. There was a serious Jew question in Germany too. And possibly the Kaiser made himself further illustrious by taking some public step favorable to the disposition of the Jewish question in harmony with prophecy, though entirely ignorant thereof. The death of Dr. Herzl in 94 was surely a great shock to all. Dr. Herzl was bent on the formation of the Jewish state and charter rights which a Sultan of Turkey, the ruler of Palestine, was not willing to grant. Another feature of during this grand transition period is the year 1914. This year is known as the end of the Gentile times. Volume two, study four, we learned that the times of the Gentiles, which occupied the interim starting at 606 and ending at A.D. 1914, a period of 2,520 years. On page 79 of Volume 2, 
We read, the beginning of these Gentile times is clearly located by the scriptures. They're furnishing, they furnish us with the length also, the fixed period or lease of the Gentile dominion. We know positively just when it will be terminated. The Bible does furnish this fixed period, which must be fulfilled, but it was furnished in such a way that it could not be understood when written, nor until the lapse of time and events of history had shed their light upon it, and even only then by those who were watching and who were overcharged by the cares of this world. The Bible evidence is clear and strong that at times the Gentiles is a period of 2,520 years. From, AD, from BC 606 to include and to and including 1914. This lease of universal dominion to Gentile governments, as we have already seen, began with Nebuchadnezzar, not when his reign began, but when the typical kingdom of the Lord passed away and the dominion of the earth left. This is also corroborated with what Moses had stated to the Israelites when he came down from the mountain with the two tables of the law, when they were sinning, that if they were disobedient to God, he would punish them seven times. Leviticus 26, 13. In Daniel 12, 7, it talks about time, times, and a half a time. How long was the time? Question book, page 864, we answer, a year or time according to the old Hebrew method of preserving chronological records was ordinarily a year or 12 lunar months of approximately 30 days each or 360 days. In the symbolic prophecies of the scriptures, a day stood for a year. Noting the fulfillment of this prophecy, it is determined that the seven times spoken about in Leviticus 26, 18 is seven times 360 which equals 2,520 years in which the Jewish people were to be the subject to the Gentile powers and kingdoms. As the Jewish kingdom was overturned and destroyed in the year 606 BC, seven times or 2,520 2, years brings us to the date 1914, when the Jews will be restored to their own land to have a government or kingdom of their own, which will be the nucleus of the coming universal government, so frequently referred to in the scripture prophecies. This date of 1914 marks the time when we say the Gentile kings have had their day. Another feature during this grand transitional period is years 1939 to 1945. This time was World War II. Well, this time period is a very dark part of history. Six million Jews were brutally killed in what will go down in history as a horrible time. Jewish men, women, and children all taken in train, boxcars to different concentration camps only to be killed or used as slaves for their captures. What they may have owned, property, business, assets, money, or jewelry, all taken from them. I heard a story told by a high-ranking Canadian politician just last week. At an early age of adulthood, he wanted to visit Israel. He also visited, at that time, Auschwitz and Bogothal, where he was deeply touched. When the Jews were brought into the camps, they were stripped of all belongings, including their hair. He goes on to saying that as they were walking through the camps, they came upon a big brick building. The tour guide told them that all the jewelry and gold was stored there. He also told them that the building was called none other than Canada. Named after the decades of Canadian advertising to come to Canada, where it was the land of plenty and the land of great treasures. He said that the guards would taunt the prison workers, the Jews, that separated and categorized the items stolen by saying, you're going to Canada today. As a Canadian himself, that was too much, and he broke down and wept. It was the Jewish people that was with him that gave him comfort. As he said, it was Jews comforting a Gentile. 
In 2017, Sister Norma and I personally visited a, a concentration camp in the Czech Republic, and Czech Republic and called Racine. We were shown an area the size of a baseball field that was sunken. We were told that was due to the decayed bodies of Jews that were dumped into this so-called mass grave. When visiting this site, people would pick up a tiny pebble and put them by the emblem explaining the scene. <clears throat> we were told that this was how the Jews would show they remembered. Sister Norma was happy to place a tiny stone at that memorial. I couldn't help but thinking about the certain stone spoken about in Daniel 2.35. Then was the iron and the clay and the brass, the silver and the gold broken in pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became the great mount, a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And yes, when in Budapest, we saw the memorial that was erected April the 16th in 2005 of 60 pairs of 1940s styled iron shoes that were set in concrete on the lower Danube River bank. This memorial was to honor the Jews who were massacred by fascist Hungarian militia of the Arrow Cross Party. The Jews were rounded up and taken to the riverbank where they were ordered to remove their shoes before being shot, leaving them to fall into the Danube River and washed away. The massacre was done 1945 slash 1940, 44 to 45. Another feature during this grand transition period is the year 1948. Israel was declared a nation. By no means this has been a trouble-free time for that nation. On May 14, 1948, the Jews of Palestine finally declared their independence, forming the state of Israel. The next day, seven neighboring Arab armies Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Yemen invaded Israel, and the Secretary of the Arab League, Assam Pasha, declared jihad. The Muslim Mufti of Jerusalem said, I declare a holy war, my Muslim brothers. Kill the Jews, kill them all. Most of the Arabs of the new Israel state left the country with the thought to erase the work of Arab armies and later returned to occupy the Jewish property they assumed would be captured. Even though they had great losses, Israel survived. In 1948, Israel signed an armistice, armistice with Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, and Transjordan that annexed Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, later changing the name to Jordan and granting Jordanian citizenship to all Palestinian Arabs in these areas. These areas have become the constant springboard for terrorism, terrorist attacks against Israeli civilians. Between 1949 and 1965, when all Judea, Samaria, the West Shore and Jerusalem and Gaza were under Arab control, no effort was made to create a second Palestinian state, state for Arabs living there. It is important to note that the Yasser Arafat and Palestinian Liberation Organization formed in 1964 revealed their ancient identity and the self need for self preservation and human dignity. And that was the beginning of the PLO. 1967, war. In the first months of 1967, Israel's Aber, Israel's Arab neighbors, neighbors posted troops surrounding Israel with the object to attack and capture Israel. Confronted with this hostile threat in June 5th of that year, Israel determined it necessary to launch a preventative attack against Egypt. Jordan attacked with artillery and on June 8th, Israel defeated Jordanian forces. On June 9th, Israel attacked the Syrians in the Golan Heights where the Syrian troops had been bombarding the northern part of Israel with artillery. It was not Israel's intention to war against their neighbors, but forced into battle. Israel captured the Sinai Peninsula, Gaza Strip, 
Judea and Samaria and the Golan Heights, all in <clears throat> just six days in 1862. The Sinai Peninsula was re returned to Egypt in exchange for a full diplomatic recognition. Israel has an appointment with destiny. Truly, never in history has a nation been destroyed, its people dispersed to the ends of the earth, and then nearly 2,000 years later, regathered to their homeland and reestablished as a nation. Truly, Israel is a nation of miracles. Zechariah 8, 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of the language of the nations, even shall take hold on the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Israel's troubles of today, we are all watching the news today as we witness the, atro as we witness the atrocities that were committed October the 7th. 2023 by Hamas. We also see the continental rocket, the continual rock, rocket attacks daily by the Hezbollah and the Hamas along with the rockets fired by the Houthis at shipping vessels in the shipping lanes. We see the media, the majority of today's media, biased on what they report on events over the Middle East. Yes, the majority of today's media are biased. Coverage on the biased media give courage, give courage to the Palestinians, but don't give coverage to the Palestinians, but don't give fair coverage of Israel or its people. Why is the media so biased, you ask? Because the majority of media are controlled by Satan and his minions, the fallen angels. Hamas attacked Israel October 7th and took 253 hostages and killed 1,163 Israelis and foreigners by thousands of Hamas-led gunmen, the worst loss of life since the founding of Israel in 1948. We have the UN, United Nations. What is the purpose, you may ask, of that? The main objectives of the United Nations are the maintenance of the international peace and security, the promotion of the well-being of the peoples of the world, and international cooperation to these ends. Then we have the UNWRA. The UNWA is a part of the United Nations family in addition to a limited subsidy from the regular budget. The agency benefits from a diverse range of partnerships with sister UN agencies. The UNRA has a, fund, has a humanitarian and development mandate to provide assistance and protection to Palestinian refugees, pending a just and lasting solution to their plight. As we said, the UNRWA derives its mandate from the UN General Assembly, the agency's parent or, organ, and in it is only the General Assembly that can define UNRA, UNWRA. According to Israel, 12 UNRWA employees were involved in the attacks of October 7th and accused of participating in the various capacities ranging in logistics and weapons procurement to hostage taking and direct anticipation in the attack. Skipping along. We start. Uh, yes, the fallen angels are hard at work today. Whatever, whoever seems to be of the majority, beware. As watchers, we should not be deceived. Today we are witnessing the cooling relationship happening between U.S. and Israel. In this is this the start of Jeremiah 30, verse 14, which reads, And thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy and with the chastisement of a cruel one. For the multitude of thine iniquity, thy sins were increased. Another feature during 
The grand transition period is the increase of knowledge. Daniel 12, 4. But thou, o Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased. According to, the, to Google, the volume of knowledge is doubling every 12 hours. The doubling rate used to be 25 years in 1945. Speed with that technology is progressing, is the, is the driver which are upending our careers, transforming lives, and disrupting econo economies. Even more tragic is the huge digital divide that is being created. <clears throat> Amazing facts about Israel. There are many, 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 many facts about Israel leading in scientific, medical, and in uh, uh, technical uh, industries. I'm trying to go along here. Um, <clears throat> Israel today has developed a motor, a motor called Aquarius engines. And it has one moving part. If fuel is applied, it can run 1,000 hours before any maintenance. It can be seen online with AquariusEngines.com. Hydrogen on demand not stored is being looked at possible the endless fuel to be used with it. Fuel that uses distilled water and it emanates water as a byproduct. Speaking only inventions came the blessing. How about a shoe insole that generates electrical charging as you walk or run? Yes, that insole has been invented and patented by a doctor in Vancouver. As you walk or run, your heel portion activates a generator that charges a battery and that is strapped to your ankle. Just imagine, Elon Musk envisions wi fi the world. People in remote areas that don't have electricity may someday have their phones charged up by listening to the ancient worthies giving their daily broadcast merely by charging a phone while they are walking. The inauguration of the kingdom will be accomplished with such awe-inspiring scenes as will call the whole world, cause the whole world to tremble with fear and to gladly recognize the anointed of the Lord as king of the whole earth. Israel shall be willing and anxious for the new kingdom. As it is written, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. It will be just what Israel has waited for only it will be much grander, much more enduring than anything they ever conceived. And indeed, very shortly, as our text delivers, God's kingdom will be recognized as the desire of all nations. Brethren, there are many more things that could be spoken about, but Time permits only so much. We trust the words spoken have enhanced our appreciation of the establishment and how it's being manifest today. And we do trust that as the days go forward, we will be able to appreciate more of the outworkings of our Lord's great kingdom. So the Lord add his blessings and overrule with anything that has been said in this.